what's good you gang and welcome back to the channel i hope y'all are doing so well i know i am so this is the third video the third crime video i done put out and i'm so happy y'all seem to be liking the video so your girl gonna keep throwing them out every single week so make sure you stay tuned if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that sub down below hit that like button so you don't miss absolutely no content whatsoever and yeah, y'all, let's get to this case. So today we're going to be talking about Roxanne Elizabeth Haltoff, a young woman that went missing back in Austin, Texas on July the 7th, 2006. Roxanne was born on July 3rd, 1988 to Elizabeth Harris. She was the eldest of five children and her family absolutely adored her. They described her as having a very good heart. She was a very good person and would give you the shirt off her back. After some challenging years in high school, Roxanne became a very hard worker Worker and started focusing on her future. She started working towards getting her GED and while in the program, they assisted her with getting a new job. Roxanne got hired on as an intern at a flower shop and her employer spoke very highly of her and said she excelled as a florist designer. Roxanne was growing up and making her mom very proud. On July 3rd, 2006, Roxanne was looking forward to the holiday, especially because that day marked the second year anniversary of her and her boyfriend Louis being together. After they watched the fireworks, they wanted to spend some time in a hotel together. Elizabeth said Roxanne came home in a hurry, grabbed some of her belongings, and told her she'd see her in a couple days. Elizabeth told Roxanne to make sure she called her, which she said she always did. After spending some time with her boyfriend, Louis, Roxanne called her mom on July the 7th and asked her if she could stay one more night. Elizabeth really wasn't too happy about Roxanne staying, but she knew Roxanne was having a good time swimming and sunbathing, so she decided to let her stay. Elizabeth said they had planned to go on a shopping trip the next morning, and she really wanted Roxanne to go, but Roxanne insisted that she wanted to stay one more night. So it's the next day. It's 12 o'clock noon and Roxanne still isn't there. And honestly, her family really isn't too alarmed. They just thought maybe she decided that she wanted to stay with her boyfriend. She ditched them. And they said after a couple hours of waiting on her, they just decided to go to the outlets without her. Elizabeth said they spent several hours at the outlets and after they decided to come home. She said when she got home, she received a phone call, but it wasn't from Roxanne. It was from Louis. And he was asking her, has she seen Roxanne? And of course, Elizabeth, like no I haven't seen Roxanne she's supposed to be with you where is she so Lewis says yeah we got into an argument last night around 8 30 and she walked out I tried to chase her I tried to tell her to come back in the hotel but she didn't and she never showed back up so I thought she was with you Elizabeth said immediately she got worried because she heard the concern in Lewis's voice and she knew she had to act fast Lewis said when Roxanne walked out he did chase her and he said maybe she just needed some time to cool off so he went back into the hotel and waited about 20 minutes before he decided to come back out and go back to the spot where he last seen her but he said she was gone he said that she had left behind her purse her wallet and her clothes so pretty much Roxanne left the hotel with nothing but her clothes on her back now here's where it gets a little sus to me because I don't know no woman that's gonna leave an unfamiliar place or leave a place at all and leave her purse and her wallet and her cell phone and, and all these things that she would need while she's outside the home or outside wherever she is you're gonna need those things so why would she leave even if she was mad you know generally when you mad you take your things with you so that already didn't sit right with me but we're going to continue the story. So after Roxanne's family decides to go down to the hotel they sell, they start searching areas of the hotel and around the hotel. It even showing the residents pictures of Roxanne to see if they remembered her or seen her. But unfortunately, no one had even seen her. So at this point, Elizabeth tells Louis, okay, it's time for us to call the police. But which both of them did and they called separately. On July 10, 2006, three days after Roxanne was last seen, police launched a missing persons investigation. They headed to the hotel to find any evidence that they could find, but unfortunately, finding a scene was really difficult. So instead, they decided to take a look at the hotel bookings, but unfortunately, those were even incorrect and not even up to date. But according to the hotel booking sheet, Roxanne and Lewis stayed in room 217, or at least 
that's what it said. The authorities honestly didn't know whether it was true or not, but they decided they should go ahead and check it out anyway. When police got to the room, they automatically knew that there was no scene to investigate since the room had looked like it had been cleaned and stayed in several times. The police then decided to speak with Lewis since he was the last person to have seen Roxanne. But unfortunately, he was hard to get in touch with, even though he had made the initial 911 phone call. And even though police hadn't heard from Lewis, Elizabeth did. He showed up to Elizabeth's house with Roxanne's clothing. And on closer inspection, Roxanne's sister said it wasn't even her clothing. It was way too small to be hers. And when they asked Lewis, he said, oh, I, I don't know. I picked the clothes up off the floor um, and I just put them in her bag and brought them to you. Like that's what was on the floor and that's what I got. So it pretty much just keeps getting weirder and weirder. So after hitting several dead ends, the police decides to focus on Roxanne's cell phone records. And when searching, they found over 300 phone calls from various places spanning from like a minute apart. But a couple calls stood out to them because they was actually made after Roxanne disappeared. And after some digging, police discovered that the calls were originating from Lewis's ex-girlfriend that lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And when police contacted her, they learned some very disturbing things about Lewis. She said Lewis had called her that night and told her that he was in a whole bunch of trouble and that he needed to get away and come spend some time with her. And she said hell no because she was already scared of Lewis. She was terrified of him. She said they had had a very violent past. Roxanne's family said they completely disagreed approved of him they say he was a real weirdo when he would come around he wouldn't speak he wouldn't talk he wouldn't have anything to do with the family and her mom says she just didn't like him at all she she banned him from even coming to their home because she just thought he was a bad influence on Roxanne so at this point investigators have enough reason to pull a background check on this guy they found out he had an extensive history of small crimes and was even convicted of delivery of a controlled substance. They also found out something way much worse than that. He was 12 years older than Roxanne. So that means when she was 16, he was 28. So not only is this man a potential murderer, but he's also a child predator. But according to Roxanne's family, she felt completely safe with him. And that's probably the reason why she was in that area. So as time passes by, Lewis becomes even more harder to reach. And when police get a hold of him, he says, um, I don't know why y'all contacted me. I've already told you everything I know. So at this point, I feel like this is harassment. At this point, I feel like y'all think that it's me. And I just don't want to be contacted anymore. Leave me alone. I don't understand how you could do that. If that's your girlfriend of two years, you should want to do whatever it takes to get her home safely or to f at least figure out what happened to her. So on July 19th, 2006, almost two Two weeks after Roxanne was last seen, Lewis finally decides to go down to the police station to answer their questions. But he doesn't want to answer any open-ended questions, or at least nothing is going to get him caught up. And when asked about the phone calls, he says, yeah, I did make the phone calls. And yeah, I did call my ex-girlfriends. I called different girls. I flirted with girls. I did whatever I did because I was mad that she left. He claimed Roxanne knew he was no good. He claimed Roxanne knew that he flirted with different girls and she was pretty cool with it. He pretty much downplayed their entire relationship. So to me, if I was if I was a cop or whatever the case may be, or if I was in a detective, that would have automatically been a red sign to me. Cause it's just like, how you with this person for two years and you're downplaying her like this, like she's missing. You know, you should be very concerned about her whereabouts. And instead you're saying, oh, I had nothing to do with it. I have no idea what you're talking about. Lewis said he had absolutely nothing to do with Roxanne's disappearance and there was at least one person that could corroborate his story. He said it was a hotel employee that worked there. He said she spent majority of the night with him after Roxanne left. And when detectives questioned the witness, she did agree to what Lewis said. She said she saw Roxanne leave the hotel. She saw Lewis run behind her and try to get her to come back to the hotel but she didn't and so he walked back she said after a few hours she decided to go to the room and that's where she spent majority of the night she said she stayed from about 10 o'clock that night to three o'clock that morning so at this point lewis has the witness he has the phone calls that was made after roxanne supposedly disappeared and he has the story of the witness stand with him majority of the night so his time is pretty much accounted 
accounted for. But the police still want to polygraph the witness. But before they did, an unexpected lead came up. A man was brought into the police station for questioning, and he had Roxanne's ID. Now backtrack a little bit, um, sometime after Roxanne disappears, police is called to a Motel 6 where a woman claimed that a man was trying to sexually assault her. Now when the police arrived, she told them that he had already fled the scene, but the dummy ended up coming back because he forgot his wallet. And when he came back, police was still there. His name is Jeffrey Moore. And he got a little lucky because the witness decided not to press charges, but the police still wanted to search him. And when they did, they found Roxanne's ID in his wallet. It said police lock up for four days until the person that's in charge of mailing back IDs checked the database and saw that Roxanne had been reported missing. Police had decided to conduct a telephone interview with Jeffrey Moore and they had to use an interpreter since he was deaf. When asked why did he have Roxanne's ID, he stated that he took Lewis and Roxanne to the nearby Walgreens to get some cigarettes. He said he saw Roxanne use her ID so she could have very well dropped her ID in his car without knowing. When investigators asked Lewis about it, he did agree that Jeffrey did take them to the store, but neither one agreed on the route that they took. Jeffrey said that the ride was from downtown Austin to the Rungberg area. And Lewis said, no, the ride was from the Walgreens back to the hotel. So this was the first inconsistency between them. Police definitely believed that one of these men knew something and that they wasn't telling the truth but they had nothing to go on and nothing to contradict their stories. So pretty much with nothing to go on, they decided to go ahead and polygraph the witness. And when they did, she passed. So pretty much Lewis's alibi checked out. So seven months later, police get another big break in the case. At first, police kind of believed that Lewis may had nothing to do with it. But when his current girlfriend contacts police, they start to think maybe they should have kept looking into him a little more. It was stated that when Lewis and the mother of his children met up to talk about the children, instead of talking about them, he decided to threaten her and tell her that if she didn't do what he said, that she was going to end up like Roxanne. So this girl is really scared for her life. And at this point, she decides to get a restraining order against him. And he's charged with making a terroristic threat. He was sentenced to 140 days in jail. Lewis said that he did not tell her that and she had prior knowledge of Roxanne's disappearance. So pretty much she was just trying to get back at him. And with nothing to back up her story, of course, they had to let Lewis go. On May 22nd, 2019, police announced that they were looking into new evidence into Roxanne's case. A detective got a warrant to obtain her cell phone records after realizing there were possible roaming charges the day before she disappeared. Rosalind, her sister, says that she knows Roxanne's case is solvable. And that's pretty much where the story ends, y'all. Like, the story is super sad and it makes no sense whatsoever how does a young girl just walk away like she walked away she left her purse she left her cell phone she left her wallet she left her family she just walked away it is no way but with runberg being such a bad area you never know you never know what could have happened to her anything could have happened to her or she could still be here it's it's hard to say Either way, I know that Roxanne was grown and I know she was of age, but I blame Lewis. I bl even if he didn't do anything to her, I blame him because he was supposed to protect her. She trusted him. That's the reason why she was in such a bad area because she thought that he could keep her safe and he failed at that. And I do hope that it still eats him up to this day. If, if he didn't do it, I still hope that it eats him up to this day because it's your fault. You should have went behind her. It don't matter matter if she was upset you, sh you should have chased her she was in an unfamiliar area and I don't see how someone that you claim you care about you just let them walk off by themselves in the dark it's I, I can't imagine it I, I don't know I'm not throwing accusations but it didn't it doesn't sound right and as far as this man Jeffrey he could have something to do with it too you know he could be the one that police needs to look at but it's hard to say it's hard to say it's not really that much evidence there or is it could these Roman charges be the answer to what really happened to her? Did the argument even happen? Is the witness just covering up what this guy is saying because she liked him at the time? I mean, it's possible to, to pass a polygraph test and be, and be lying. I mean, I guess it's possible. 
But something isn't right. And I feel like how the police feel. One of these men, they know what happened to her. They know. Or they may not. Somebody else may know what happened to her. Either way, Roxanne, she needs to come home and her family needs her back. Neither Lewis or Jeffrey have been charged in Roxanne's case. And her case is still actively open. Whatever happened to Roxanne remains a mystery. So what do you think happened to Roxanne? Do you think foul play was involved? Do you think she just walked away? Do you think either one of these men had anything to do with it? Tell me what you think and make sure to comment down below. And if you have any info on Roxanne's disappearance, please do not hesitate to call the Austin, Texas Police Department. Of course, I will link all the information down below and their phone number so that you can go and research and read the story yourself. We are together praying for Roxanne's family, and we pray that one day that you do have closure. And as always, you guys, it's good to see you, and I will see you guys later. Peace. I am thinking it's so It's all in my head, it's all in my head, it's all in my head.